Welcome back, everybody, to another podcast episode here with Magnus and I for our second episode of this Indoor Sub topic. Now, if you missed last week's episode, we shared more of just our background stories of paddling and what paddling means to us and why we're so passionate about it. So I encourage you, if you're not listening to the episode yet, to maybe put a pause in this one, go back, listen to the episode first to kind of get more of a background of who we are and our background instead of paddleboarding. And then come back to today's episode as we dive into really, I guess, the beginning birth or stages of indoor sup and how this concept came to came to being from this um, company, Kona Sports, there in Sweden. And so before we dive into today's topic, though, I simply want to catch up with Magnus here and hear what's going on in his life this past week. So Magnus, what's going on? How are you today? Um, what have you been up to this past week? Yeah, um, hi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I actually been working with some new exercises. And one uh, that I found very interesting was that using more our like uh, front weight when you paddle, mm-hmm. so you're almost always falling forward. That increases your stroke rate uh, without um, r- raising your heart rate. So mm. that's one thing I've been working on with this uh, last weeks. Awesome, interesting one. Yeah, I feel like I was talking to you the other week. Um, I was working on the reverse of that where I was putting too much weight in the front of my feet. So I was trying to back that off a little bit and try to bring some more on, on my heels. So yeah, yeah. I, that's super interesting topic. I feel like the feet are an area where a lot of paddlers don't realize it affects their whole entire paddle stroke and their body as well on the paddle board. So yeah, I'm sure that that study is pretty interesting what you're doing right now as well. So that's awesome. Are you, um, you know, Oh, go ahead. Yeah. This is the, the, the fun part, you know, with, with my job. Because when we look at things, we look at studies and, and research and so on. And then it's my job to, to test that, to really see, okay, how can we transform this over to stand-up paddling? Mm. And uh, what's happening with, with the heart rate, for example, or what happened with the stroke rate? How much energy uh, do we uh, save and so on uh, in these type of exercises? Mm. That's super good. And as you said before, like you did like a full winter season of just with indoor sup, but now you're back in the water again. So how are you enjoying that? You enjoy kind of fresh air in your lungs for for a change? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, The fun part, because I never spent so many, many months Mm -hmm. just based on um, uh, low intensity work. You know, Mm -hmm. indoor sup in this case uh, is strength training, but in a very you know, specific way and mm-hmm. with a very low resistance. It means it's a, it's all also a, what you call a LSD, low, um, um, long, slow distance. That's what LSD stands for in this case. Okay. So that means that this is your, what you actually build everything off on. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> before, when you're mostly on the water, you n- will never reach these effects from this low intensity work. It means that when we're on the water, with the accumulating resistance, we always end up in like heart rate zone two or three. Mm-hmm. We don't get the, the, the good effects from the low intensity training. That's so true. So true. Well, I'm glad you're doing well, enjoying your your mix now of indoor and indoor paddling as well as on the water paddling. So it's awesome to hear. Um, yeah, yeah. Now I actually do one 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 on water and one one mm-hmm. indoor, just to be able to feel the difference and see if there's any corrections I need to do and so on. So what I've learned this winter um, will hopefully help me in a new way uh, on the water. Oh, that's awesome. That's super exciting here. And yeah, I've even just my few months now of using indoor sup kind of noticed the things as well. The things I noticed more with my paddle stroke using the indoor sup because I can focus more on those key aspects as we'll talk about later and um, as well as how that translates on the water. So yeah, I did a little more indoor paddling this past week as well. So I had a race just over a week ago now. And so yeah. I took two days of rest after that racing. And then I actually had like a pretty nasty blister in the palm of my hand after that race. And so <laughs> Even just really holding a paddle shaft kind of hurt. So after that, I did a day of strength training. 
and then got back in the indoor sup, I believe it was by Thursday and did two rounds of, yeah, you know, two days of just indoor sup paddling. Um, one day I focused more on my, my hip thrusting. And then the next day I worked more on, um, my reach and entering that or hinging forward better with my reach. So it's fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy doing those longer sessions too. Just kind of focusing over and over and over again, that same motion of either the reach or like a, a hit drive and it just creates that muscle memory. Cause yeah, until you create that muscle memory and it just comes natural for your body to, to do that. It's hard to move on to the next thing, because if you don't create that muscle memory, move on to the next thing. You just revert exactly. back to your old ways of what you're just trying to fix on the other thing. And so it's like, focus on one thing at a time, create that muscle memory, move on to the next thing, and then go back again and do it all over again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's always like that, that you, <clears throat> when you've done something and then redo it, mm -hmm. then you get uh, more or less a, a new perspective on that exercise and on that moment. So I've realized that Many of, of the discoveries uh, uh, I found was that after like 20, 30 minutes of uh, the same moment. And that means that I usually uh, try to have a stroke rate around 50 strokes per minute mm -hmm. uh, when I uh, try something new. Yeah, And then uh, I increase the stroke rate as well. But in the beginning, it's better to take it a little bit slower. Yes, no, I totally agree with that. That's cool. Well, let's kind of dive into more of today's topic. And like anything, it's super important to know the history and really the background of a new product per se. So for example, we're talking obviously the sessions or this episodes about this indoor stuff here. If you're watching the video, you can see it here hanging on the wall back behind me here. Um, but before this was even created, I'm sure there's some kind of story of how this idea even came to being and what started the process of what we're talking today, which um, is about the ergometer. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the phrase ergometer, like me, when I had to look it up the other day, like what does this phrase actually mean? Because I know the concept, but like what does this phrase actually mean? So I looked it up here and according to a definition online from Primo Fitness USA says an ergometer is an exercise machine that tests the exertion exhibited by certain muscles or that keeps track of how much a particular exercise has been done. It can also refer to certain exercise machines that allowed someone to perform cardio exercises using um, the arms and legs while remaining in a stationary position. So that kind of gives you a definition of ergometer. So Magnus, like why is this, why is the machine important? And why is this phrase important? Like why did this and start, uh, this begin the idea of indoor sub with you. Yeah, actually, it started when we uh, we began to do the studies about the the uh, activity of step, stand up paddling. Uh, Try to analyze what type of movements or type of muscles were involved in this uh, this activity. And in the beginning, the first test that we did was actually in an indoor pool. Uh, it was mm -hmm. like. 16 meters long, around 16 yards long, <laughs> and okay. the 12th board. Uh, and we had to build like a platform in the middle of that um, of that pool, uh, just to be able to measure VO2 and, and everything. Mm. So it was a little bit complicated. And with that small pool, uh, you know, the more we wanted to do what we call the max test, like a four minute all out test. That meant that <laughs> The harder you paddle, the more choppy the, <laughs> the pool yeah. got. So, <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. And we had a, an, a, a machine that actually pulled us back. Mm. That machine, uh, using that machine is called 1080. And then we could measure the, uh, the watts and everything produced mm. when we, you know, tried to, to uh, pull away from from this uh, machine hmm. that, that that was uh, actually invented for some measuring power in, in swimming. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> these, these tests were quite complicated and, and, and so on. So we needed to find a better way to analyze uh, this in, in the laboratories. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> my work then was to, there was some, um, companies starting doing ergometers for stand up paddling. So, but there were, you know, you know, only using the arms, the upper body. Yeah. 
like a, a ski erg, um, double pulling uh, ergometer mm. where you just you know pull down some uh, some yeah. cable. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> but in stand up paddling, we realized quite early that you know you're you're pulling the board forward. Mm -hmm. You're setting the 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 blade in the water and pulling the board towards the blade. So we could measure the upper the work of the upper body, but not uh, the work of the lower body. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked for a couple of years trying to find out the way where we stood on the sled. And we also could measure the moment um, between the, you know, the upper body pulling. Mm -hmm. And so th this is the platform, the yeah. sled. And then it was pulled. So, mm -hmm. where how much uh, how much power on each? So you're trying to measure both the upper body and lower body simultaneously exactly. together, which I can imagine yeah. that was hard to figure out at first. <laughs> it was quite hard, and then we have to do a lot of calculations, try to find out these things out, and and the ergometer itself become become quite good, hmm. uh, but it meant it's very bulky. And it's very uh, expensive for mm -hmm. you know everyday paddlers to to invest in. Yes. So uh, my colleague Joachim, uh, mm -hmm. he he asked me, but isn't there any <laughs> cheaper way to you know uh, for people to be able to train uh, using this indoor or so on? Mm -hmm. And so you know he said, couldn't you use rubber bands or something? But in in the beginning, we used rubber bands just to get a feel of mm -hmm. what happened when we, you know, uh, put the shaft uh, to this and so on. But um, we discarded this quite quite soon, uh, mm -hmm. and and moved on. Mm -hmm. But um, like I think it's three or four years ago, uh, I started to invent the, some gym exercises. Uh, we dissected the, the paddling cycle and tried mm -hmm. to see what muscles do we use. How can we separate these muscle groups and work uh, on these alone? So we, we just took ordinary handles that was found in the in the gym and tried to replicate the moments that we did on water. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just uh, not did just okay well, we we maybe should take a, a paddle shaft instead and connect these to the cable machines um, like the uh, wire, uh, you know, pull down machines. Mm -hmm. And we connected uh, the paddle shaft to that and realized, uh, because we wanted to do this for maximum strength. So, you know, pulling as hard as you could for one to three reps mm -hmm. and we realized here, or I realized that, wow, something happened with my body. I have to stabilize my body in this totally different way that mm -hmm. I did, that I uh, couldn't do on the board mm -hmm. because it was, you know, a firm ground to stand on. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the idea came to me that, hmm, maybe we should try to lower this resistance. Okay, maybe I should try to use a rubber band. Mm -hmm. And um, there it more or less started. So Joachim mm. uh, found out that, okay, we, we need this type of equipment. And he arranged that and everything. And we started to, do, to combine the, the shaft with the, these rubber bands. Mm. Um, and, you know, working with it more and more from the beginning, we could see so many things that was good here because... This is something we call unilateral resistance, mm -hmm. meaning that you have to create the moment on one or the other side of your body. Mm -hmm. That means that you have to stabilize the other side of the body. <laughs> so if you're doing reps on your left side or doing paddling strokes on your left side, mm -hmm. you have to stabilize your body. The problem is that when we do this on water, we don't really feel that we are, you know, escaping the resistance more or less mm -hmm. because we we can lack of uh, mo uh, movability and so on and therefore we you know tend to if i paddle my left side 
my body could collapse and you know mm -hmm. follow this motion mm -hmm. meaning that i will push the left side of the board down and so on and that will affect um affect the, the stability of the board uh, directional stability uh, and the speed and everything mm. so when i started using it more and more from the beginning we just you know tried okay can we you know start to learn and understand the movements we do on on, on the water better can we find the right muscles using the indoors up yeah we could and and all all when we have courses you know technique courses so on before uh people are on the water you tell them okay focus on this now and do that for you know 10 reps and and get back here and yeah. and then okay uh, did you feel it mm -hmm. yeah, yeah everyone said yes <laughs> i could feel them at the same time no one <laughs> did <laughs> nothing of that uh, that you were telling them uh-huh so for instance uh, focusing on on keeping the lower arm straight mm. that's one of the uh most common things mm -hmm. and people think they do it because their brain think they're doing it mm -hmm. but they don't mm -hmm. therefore you can't really reach your your latissimus muscles and your bigger back muscles so if you bend your arm you will use your arm muscles or your shoulders mm -hmm. more than mm -hmm. the back muscles and so on yeah no exactly so that, yeah. was, that was the the story more or less uh, yeah bit. yeah super interesting um I've seen some photos on your guys' website, I think, of you guys doing the, the ergometer testing on the water. You guys like a paddle board in that small pool, I think. You see this person all masked up with all their VO2 stuff and then <laughs> attacks you said to that, that um, resistance behind the board. So, yeah, it looks super complicated. I mean, in some ways, I kind of want to try it just to see what it'd be like. <laughs> but like you said, yeah. I can see as you increase intensity just how crazy it would be in that little pool with all the, all the chop going on because yeah i'm sure that would be great the harder you did it the, the shopper it got so yeah and then so you started losing less force because you're trying to stabilize so yeah i can imagine yeah. it was, made it harder um the, the one one of the things here was that we're trying to do this you know uh have a follow boat that will have the mask uh oh on the yeah the problem <laughs> is that the, the membrane in the mask costs uh -huh. like the five thousand dollars oof so if you drop that in the water, <laughs> it's no good. <laughs> I can imagine the looks you get too with people like going by you guys in the boat or a paddleboard. Like, what are they doing? Dragging that guy behind a boat, this mask around his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, the thing here that was that, that was on a stick. So if you were about to fall, they could rip the mask <laughs> off you. <laughs> save the mask. Forget the paddler. Forget save the exactly. mask. <laughs> <laughs> run, run the paddler over. It doesn't yeah. matter. But... <laughs> That's hilarious. It's interesting too. I was thinking, listening to that story now, how you guys started with the bands first and then you're like, no, the cable has got to be better. And so you start doing the cable machine work, but it totally makes sense what you're saying there in terms of resistance. Cause, um, I imagine myself doing like, um, the cable workouts in the gym and like you kind of get that same resistance for the majority of the pull throughout the whole pull of the cable, because I wait soon, the weight lifts off the, the rack, the weight remains kind of the same for the whole entire pull. And so like that resistance is that like you're saying is like the same through entire the entire time you're pulling a cable, which is good for workouts and, and there's certain targets, certain muscle groups, obviously it's still great exercise to be doing, but I understand what you're saying now in terms of like the paddling experience and the way we go through a paddle board stroke, how our resistance is not then it's the same through the entire process between like the entry and catch phase to the power phase to the exit and recovery, like through the whole entire process, um, we're like putting different amounts of load um, on our body and our paddle stroke. And so I can see now it makes more sense now why you guys use, use rubber bands, because also with a band, the more you pull it, the more resistance you're getting on the band. Um, and that closer it is to there's kind of similar way we, we do a paddle board stroke. Um, yeah. so that's interesting. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense now, but I've seen people using cable machines with a paddle shaft as well, doing workouts and I'm sure it's yeah. probably a great lat workout on the side of your body. But like you said, there's no way that the tension you feel on that and the way you have to stabilize your body, like almost you're almost at a stand more parallel stance because you have to brace your body to handle that load. Only time really staying like that on a paddle board is maybe for a sprint or something. Um, so that's interesting. So going back to a cable machine though, 
would you ever recommend people to use a paddleboard shaft and a cable machine for workouts or is that not, or is there better ways to do that for workouts and not worry about using a paddle shaft? Yeah. If you know what, what you're doing it for, because mm -hmm. for me, it's not about burning calories. Mm. You know, you can burn calories in so many uh, more effective ways. Mm -hmm. But if you want to achieve something, if you want to actually understand your body and understand your movement, then it's it's getting interested, especially for me. And, and mm -hmm. using uh, uh, the indoor stuff now for so many months in, in a row, it learned me so many things that mm -hmm. I never could have learned uh, on, on water. Mm -hmm. I thought I had good balance. I thought I was like sided and so on, but, mm -hmm. you know, but, but this was really exposing my body and yeah. how I found it. Yeah. And so I really had to relearn and really had to focus that, okay, I'm not as like sided. I have to work more on this side mm -hmm. compared to the other and so on. And, and then it gets interesting because then you see the progression suddenly yeah. you, you you don't really find that muscle on your for example left side uh you find it on your right but you try all always on the left mm -hmm. side to, to see it and 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 then you just find it hmm. and then you can do it for like three four reps and suddenly it's gone again so, <laughs> so frustrated <laughs> no so then, yeah then you're eager to do another session again to to see okay can i control this this time mm. that makes sense yeah i can see yes yeah, so that's why we're saying i guess we're saying it's so beneficial to use the bands because as we're mimicking more of the actual paddle stroke like you say we can actually find those things we can't find in the water which is so true um i'll kind of go back to my beginning experience with pet indoor sup so you guys reached out to me towards the end of last year um, that's about roughly the time I got that you guys sent me uh, the equipment to use. And I'll be honest, like the first month, it didn't, I didn't use it too much. Cause I really didn't know like how to use it. I was at the time I was still living in Mexico. So I was like, I can be on the water year round paddling. So why yeah. would I ever want to go inside and use this thing for an exercise? So at that time I viewed it more as an exercise versus, um, technique training and improving those other areas of a paddleboard stroke. Yeah. And so it took me the solid month until actually I went back for a Christmas break, um, to my family, flew out to visit some family for Christmas time. And during those two weeks, I was in a cooler and a climate Obviously, I didn't have my paddleboard equipment with me. So I just brought the indoor up and it's kind of the first time like, all right, let's figure this thing out. Like, what are we doing here? And that's when it started to click like, oh, this is, yes, it's good. Like it's the lower zone training and definitely can use it for that. But more importantly, my paddleboard stroke there's areas here I feel like I can improve upon using this thing. Cause like I said, I'm not worried about the factors of the water conditions, my balance, um, yeah. those things that are just under out of our control in the water. And that's when I think it started to click with me. Like, Oh, this thing is here to help me improve my skills. So I'm actually on the water. The things like I'm trying to, for example, trying to improve my reach or improve my hip drive or improve my cadency or improve my power. Like, the way I get there is by reversing <clears throat> to indoor sup to where we're on, as you say, that stable, that stable surface. And, yeah. but even then it took a while to kind of figure out because when you're, when you go from hundred percent on the water to going to an indoor session, your body also has to kind of learn that. Like, it's not just something where you just like jump on an indoor pad, like with indoor paddle band here and shaft and you're like, Oh, it just makes sense. Like, no, it, it takes a little bit of while for your body to learn the movement as well as the bands and, and figuring that out. Yeah. And it exposes things too, like you're saying, exposes things in our paddle war stroke. And for me, the biggest thing exposed right away was how much I was using my lower back muscles during my paddle board stroke. And so this is something I had to really focus on um more actually more recently, more than more the last month or so. And what I've been talking a lot on my social media pages is like using more of our hips to drive us up forward again mm -hmm. and towards the end of our paddle board stroke, where I suppose we dive beginning stroke where we're leaning forward we're hinging forward into our stroke driving the, the hip drive um a little more backwards that we're driving our, our driving our hips down but then when you drive our hips back forward again to drive us up and before i was using i didn't realize with indoor sup i realized i was using more of my lower back muscles to pull me back up versus my mm -hmm. hips and i was using the smaller muscles which was causing my back to really by the end of an indoor sup paddle session after an hour it was on fire and it hurt so bad and i talked to you about this like what is going on like on the water uh didn't notice as much. I was still doing it, but I didn't notice as much, both indoor, like it really exposed it. 
And as soon as I started adjusting things like the weight of my feet, as well as using more of my hip drive to drive me forward in my hip muscles, sort of better versus my lower back. Yeah. They solved the problem. Like no joke. Like, um, that took the tension right away and I can do a full session now, like an hour long session and north up and not feel the pain. And so that's been super interesting for me as a new person to it. It's yeah. like being exposed. And, and and this is what more or less is for. Uh, if you look at stand-up paddling, it's so demanding in so many ways. Even the smallest detail will, will uh, have an effect. That's why it's so, why I really like, well, uh, that's why I, you know, been into stand-up paddling for so many years now just focusing mm -hmm. on this because it's so functional in in every way meaning that just the smallest detail is worth to focusing on and, and especially if you focus on yourself your own body and how you handle these things that will improve you in every other area as well mm -hmm. so it's not about stand-up paddling um for me stand-up paddling is a, a tool to uh, you know an all over uh, an all over performance mm -hmm. so <clears throat> if it, if you will paddle faster and more effective uh at the same time it's awesome because mm -hmm. I, I love being out on the water so mm -hmm. that is perfect but and what we realized is that it's so many things that is uh so complicated yeah. to handle and, and to to coping uh cope with more or less when, mm. when we're on the water and Absolutely. therefore it's perfect to you know get inside in your home more or less safe environment mm -hmm. just focusing on yourself and, and uh, what you need to to, uh, to handle and, and, and learn mm. so amazing. in many ways you know going to to the gym that could for many people they shift behavior they want to, you know, express something instead yeah. of focusing on themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why this also could be good for, for many people. Mm. So I'm coming to you, say like I was a few months ago, like as a an athlete who is, enjoys paddling, enjoy working on technique and form, enjoy getting faster. Um, and I've never used indoor sup before. I come to you like, why should I use indoor sup? Like, what would you tell me? Like, why is, why are some reasons why I should be maybe using indoor sup if I don't already? And I would say that it will help you understand what you're doing on the water. Mm -hmm. It will help you understand how you can use your, you know, bigger mobility muscles, meaning that these muscles are designed for making you move to, you know, transfer your body weight central gravity uh, on water mm -hmm. in a better way and and if we just go out on the water and we try to learn ourselves i did this because there was no one that could tell me how to do it so we had to figure it uh, all out by ourselves mm -hmm. that means that you are affected all these uh, all your protection reflexes that will inhibit you from doing the things that you want. But these reflexes are protecting your life. They want you to not do things that could make you fall off the board, for instance. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you actually um, you develop a technique that's more for your safety than for your performance or, or effectiveness. Mm -hmm. so <clears throat> by understanding this and when you have a when when you go out on the water and have a, a clear purpose you have a focus then when you keep that focus then your uh, mind will instead of you know taking all the, that we're out on the water it could mm -hmm. be you know uh, sharks or whatever in the water <laughs> uh, we're focusing on the one thing that you want to focus on so mm -hmm. you don't let the brain take all that other input in mm -hmm. therefore you will get more uh, effective you will get um, get a better training session no absolutely yeah it makes sense i know we talked about in the past it's that mindset of putting almost 
simplifying things, your mind can be more clear to focus on the the bigger things you're trying to focus on. Yeah. And so, for I know for me as a as a guy, that's really important. The less things I can have distracting me in my mind, the more I can be focused. Maybe just on one thing. Exactly. <laughs> the, more, the more I can actually accomplish that one thing. I'm not distracted. So <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> Some people are very good at multitasking. I'm not one yeah. of those people. So I'm good. Glad I can like do indoor step too as well. It's like, all right, let's take some of those complications off my mind so I can really focus on here what I need to focus on, not be distracted. Yeah. <laughs> and and more or less, this, this is actually how you uh, do a race. So like if take uh, take a technical um, um, distance race, for instance, it's involving like waves or, or buoy turns and everything. And you have a lot of paddlers, other paddlers around you. Mm -hmm. But it's always, you know, uh, what will make you, um, what will actually make it a good race is when you're focusing on all the things that you want to focus on and that you want to, to achieve. Mm -hmm. well, that means the, um, the placement means that every stroke what do you want to achieve with the next stroke mm -hmm. and what, how do you want to do ne the next turn and so on mm -hmm. that is what and, and then you know doesn't matter how many people is around you or if it's coming waves at the same time and so on as mm -hmm. long as you can keep your focus on these things mm -hmm. uh, the better race it uh, the better the race will be yeah i totally agree with that in my last race um well, any race you do, there's always a point where your body starts to feel like exhaustion and yeah. you start to get more focused on that than your form obviously starts to get worse and worse as you get more focused on your exhaustion. So even through that too, it's good to like train your brain to like, all right, no, we know how to focus on these. That's a key aspect we need to focus on. So let's go back to focusing on that. Yeah. So if you're for me, like during a race, I'm like, all right, just take a deep breath here. Let's, let's calm our mind back down again and refocus on this next palatable stroke. Like, you know, we... And we know we have a lot more race to go, but if we just focus on one thing at a time, one stroke at a time, recorrect those yeah. little things, it's going to make get us there faster in the end. Yeah. But if you don't know how the next paddle stroke should feel like, mm. then it's difficult. True. So that, and the next paddle stroke, if you know that, okay, if I do it like this, that will give the best effect. Mm -hmm. I will get longest or fastest just by this type of stroke but then you have to feel it in your body as well you you mm -hmm. have to feel what muscles you're uh, activating and mm -hmm. you also need to deactivate these muscles when you don't need to use them because if you're you know totally tensed about performing well then you will activate uh, the muscles all the time and then mm -hmm. they will be totally exhausted after a while yes. And you will also more or less activate all your uh, antagonists' mm -hmm. muscles that will will you know uh, be counterproductive to that moment that you want to to perform. No, exactly. I totally agree with that. You know, the, having that muscle memory down where you can go back to that and know the feeling of that is super important. Yeah. Otherwise, say you don't know what to go back to. Um, yeah. So, so this is why the indoor sup is so good in that uh, in that matter because then you can really start to understand what muscles do I need to be able to activate. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we cannot think of all the muscles we, we need to use. We have to divide mm -hmm. this into specific training sessions, mm -hmm. meaning that I should focus in, for instance, on, on this part mm -hmm. of my body, just when like um, with the lower arm work or this part with the upper arm pressing down mm -hmm. all my body weight onto that arm. Am exactly. I able to, to handle that? What muscles do I really feel here? Mm -hmm. Or feel some tension somewhere totally different? You have to understand why. Okay, what's happening now? Why mm -hmm. am I... If you cl uh, cl uh, cleanse your buttocks, for instance, mm -hmm. which is very, very common, that means that the rest of the, the movements in, in your body will be inhibited by that, meaning that you won't be able to, to get as far forward as you want and, and so mm, on. Exactly. So kind of going more in that as well, um, 
you just kind of talked a little bit there, like isolating certain parts for a stroke or muscles kind of thing. How is it easier or not easier to do that with indoor set versus being on the water? Like why is indoor set more beneficial to centralize parts for power stroke versus being on the water? Is it possible to be on the water or is it impossible to be on the water? Like what makes indoor set better to do it on? Yeah, because then then you're you're on a stable surface. Mm-hmm. And that's the big difference. People think that, okay, uh, I want to train in uh, stand-up paddling indoors, like on an ergometer. People mm-hmm. use like ergs, connect pulleys to that and, and you know, try to to do a, a, a create an, an ergometer. And then they stand on something unstable. And suddenly they don't train anything that they will be in use of. So that's what we discovered with stand-up paddling, the performance since the beginning of stand-up paddling hasn't actually increased in any way. So what we will become, we, we've just become more, let's say, uh, we, we get a better balance. That's what we've trained, trained actually. Mm-hmm. So being on the water, you, the more you're there, the better you will um, stabilize yourself when the board moves around. But you don't control the, the board. Mm-hmm. You just you know, adapt to what's happening with the board. Mm. And that's a big problem because then we don't we cannot create any more speed than we did before. Mm-hmm. We can just do it for longer, for instance, and we can do it in, in more uh, choppy conditions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But to understand and how we can actually can create more power, a better power transmission, then we need to understand this from a from a stable surface. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think too as well, like you're saying, when we focus like an isolate a certain muscle group for like our shoulders, for example, or our back muscles or our hinging muscles and our hips, it's either to to replicate that motion over and over again. Just yeah. with like the indoor set versus like I told the people if you kind of you can do it, but it's kind of weird to go in the water. Once again, you're on a sta- unstable platform, which doesn't help. But if you're just like going in the water, just go hinge up and down on your paddle board. You're not you're not going to go anywhere because you're not doing a full paddle board stroke. So it might look kind of funny being out there in the middle of a lake, just like hinging up and down with your paddle stroke or your paddle shaft and your paddle board. Like obviously you can do that, but it's not be as functional because you're once again on an unstable surface. So it makes yeah. more sense to do those kind of exercises, like you said, on a stable surface indoors, where you just replicate it over and over and over again um, with the same consistency because the that surface is stable. So we're getting that same base to work from every single um, time we're doing that hinging forward motion. So I feel like it's very beneficial. So so before uh, we invented the, the indoor sup, we we actually did all these exercises. So we dissected mm. the paddle stroke, the paddling cycle. And, mm-hmm. and the muscles that we uh, should be working with, mm-hmm. and we did that on the board. And we, you know, um, I could go like one minute on the left side, focusing on my abdominals muscles, for instance, mm-hmm. and then the same on the the right side, and I'm focusing on the upper arms work on the left side, mm-hmm. and the same on the right side, and so on. And it was good. It helped you a little bit, mm-hmm. but if it would have been that good then I wouldn't have seen the, the difference in my um, in my body mm. uh, that I did when I started doing the, the indoor sub. Mm. Then we see that, okay, it's effective. Mm-hmm. You can understand part of it, but not the whole the whole um, the whole understanding. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> so you know you, you would never be a good Stand up paddle and just by indoor sub. <laughs> it's not that <laughs> you you definitely want to have more uh, more time on the water and, yes. and indoor. Uh, but if you want to develop, then uh, then uh, when it's come uh, becomes necessary. Mm-hmm. And if we look at you know like uh, um, the physical f- performance part. So in, in most cases for, for uh, most water sports like kayaking, uh, canoe, mm-hmm. uh, rowing and so on, uh, we have something to pull against. We had like foot, uh, foot mm-hmm. rests uh, that we could pull against. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and 
um, that then where we can create much more power. But in, in stand-up paddling, it's just our balance mm -hmm. that will be, you know, handling the, the power. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so that's why we need to be stable. We need to have that balance. We need mm -hmm. to, to be able to stand even if the board is, you know, flipping yeah. around. Uh, but in in these ca cases, uh, when like when you're doing uh, endurance sports, uh, medications when it's working times over like ten minutes, like a, if the competition times is over ten minutes, then you probably need like around eighty percent of all your training should be done in in uh, zone one. Mm -hmm. uh, 55 to mm -hmm. 70 55 to 72 percent of your maximum heart rate mm -hmm. uh, so that is more or less impossible to do on the water with yeah. a good technique yeah. meaning that you probably have to do uh i can't even run probably in zone one if i want to keep good running technique mm -hmm. uh, i'm up in zone two mm -hmm. so therefore cannot use even running that means i need to be hiking or cycling or whatever but if if i want to train thousand hours uh, during one year and spend 800 hours on yeah. you know hiking or cycling yeah that's not that effective <laughs> no uh, because during this time you need this technique training and and mm -hmm. what i found now with the indoor sub and this is the first uh, year in my 15 years uh, mm -hmm. well, we stand up paddling now that I've spent um, around 100 hours from uh, uh, yeah, beginning of December until mm -hmm. end of March. Uh, so probably I haven't done one really good zone one session on the water so mm -hmm. far. So yeah, and until it makes it, sense, like you're saying, like even just the condition on the water too, it's rare to get a calm flat day on the water for most people. So yeah, yeah. it's hard to get any kind of lower zone training on the water. And so, but we're, like I said, we're, we're mi really missing out. If we're not getting any lower training, like you're saying, then that's really hard to do. And sure you can go for a run, but even then, like you're saying for a good run, you're still going to be in, in the zone two or upper zone two. And, and so, yeah, like very hard sometimes get that super, that lower base zone for aerobic conditioning into our system while still maintaining good form. Cause like I said, like I noticed too, whenever I try to really focus on good form in the water, naturally I'm putting more power in that stroke because I'm creating a good form and creates more power. So I'm putting more exertion in my body. So it's harder to keep my, my, my heart rate lower because of that. Um, but like it's great about indoor stuff is you can do that while maintaining a lower heart rate. And so the interesting thing that I discovered here, uh, or one of the interesting things is that, you know, <clears throat> When I'm on the board, on water, if I can uh, produce around 70 strokes per minute, mm -hmm. I know that I will keep a, a speed of, of 10 k an hour. Mm -hmm. But then, then I'm, you know, uh, <laughs> very tired. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but realizing this, uh, using Indrosal, mm -hmm. I can do 70 strokes per minute mm -hmm. and still so one wow that's saying I even, yeah i even tried uh doing you know during sprinting i'm up in 90 95 strokes per minute and i've actually down 90 strokes per minute for one hour and still be in zone one that's pretty impressive so that that's that's one of the things that we haven't discovered before mm -hmm. that the signal speed meaning the, the nurse's system's ability to activate muscles as fast as possible mm -hmm. uh, that is what you train so if you can keep um I, uh, as i said in in the beginning here i i've tried uh, <clears throat> new exercise working more on always falling forward mm -hmm. in that um, extent that i have to you know, save myself on the paddle. And by just doing that, uh, I, I did a session um, one and a half hour, a couple of mm -hmm. days ago. Mm -hmm. And 
I kept uh, between 60 and 70 uh, strokes per minute and was still in zone two hmm. on the water then. Wow. So there's something, you know, we learn here mm-hmm. that you know, when we do things too fast, if you're mm-hmm. not used to that, and we suddenly do that on water, which is a potential dangerous environment for, mm-hmm. for humans, then we get stressed or the brain gets very stressed because mm. it thinks you're fleeing from something. That yeah. means that the heart rate will increase much, much more than it should. Hmm. Yeah, That's super awesome. interesting what you're saying there. Like your, your body is learning that muscle movement, I guess that muscle memory once again in the lower zones where you're on the water where, where it normally require more effort. It yeah. requires less effort because your muscles just naturally how to know how to do that in a more relaxed state. Yeah. Which is, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I never, I guess, thought and that then, deeply into it. So you're just saying that just now, but it makes sense how you can do the same motion on the water and maintain a lower heart rate than maybe you could have before you did that training off the yeah. water. And, 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 and another thing is that most people have very difficult uh, to increase their stroke rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of the, you know, the most effective ways to train stand-up paddling is do impulses. Uh, it's all out uh, bursts, more or less, from, mm-hmm. yeah, usually under 10 seconds. Because we just burn uh, creatine when we do that. So it yeah. won't affect lactate and so on. If it gets longer, you know, we create uh, lactate and, and mm-hmm. these things. So that means that we're just focusing on acceleration. Mm-hmm. and we we uh, have you know different gears in stand-up paddling so we say that um gear one would be oh uh, gear three it would mm-hmm. be the distance gear and that's usually between like 40 38 to around 60 strokes per minute depending on uh, your body constitution mm-hmm. muscle, um, uh, fiber types and, and so on mm-hmm. And uh, soon, uh, gear two is when you want to do pass someone or do accelerations or very hard headwind and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's between like 60 to 80 strokes per minute. Mm. And um, um, gear one is all out sprints, like uh, towards the finish line and, and mm-hmm. the home stretch and pure sprints and so on. So that, that will probably be more... Uh, 80 to 100 plus we have examples that people have been paddling in 130 strokes per minute uh, yeah but <laughs> the, <laughs> so you're the just kind of spinning in the water i don't know <laughs> exactly it, it doesn't mean that the higher the frequency or stroke rate um, doesn't make it more effective no yeah so there's a balance there mm-hmm so, uh, but most people should be able, I would say, to at least be able to paddle for, let's say, 30 seconds or one minute uh, over 80 strokes per minute. Mm. And that that's not that many people that's actually able to do that. Mm-hmm. Huh. So, yeah, super interesting. Yeah, so if you use the indoor, indoor sup and try to, mm-hmm. to um, do it on there, you can actually see that you have the... The, the signal speed that's required. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I think going back to you, we're talking about how you could do the higher reps or higher higher um, strokes per minute with indoor stuff with a lower heart rate zone too. Obviously, it also depends upon the resistance and the size of the band you're using too. So I think in another episode, maybe the next one, we'll maybe open up the bag for indoor sup and talk about the different band weights and why, why there's different band weights and how we use those band weights. So that'd be interesting to talk about too, maybe the next episode. I think for the day to kind of wrap things up, as we've been talking about kind of the beginning stages here, the story of indoor sup. Also, who I just want to know, like from you guys' perspective too, like who is this for? Would you guys say this is just for the paddleboard athlete who's in racing? Or would you say this is also for people who are maybe just everyday paddleboarders on an all-around paddleboard, or maybe people who are not even paddleboarders? Maybe they're just someone who is looking for a different type of um mobility aerobic conditioning that they can do like who would you say is it really for what well, actually um uh, we're working with, with a lot of um, physiotherapists mm-hmm. uh, that's uh, we involve um, people here uh, and there's um, a girl called ebba 
here in Sweden that's really skilled in, in so many ways that's been helping us to, uh, and she's using this for her patients. So she mm. she's used Imrosap more and more in her work. Mm. And um, so part of this is that this unilateral resistance is so effective for you, uh, for you or people to understand their bodies and mm. how how the body actually works. So I would say if you there's a perfect uh, tool actually for rehabilitation as well. But here as well, you need to talk to your physiotherapist or mm -hmm. or your doctor to see uh, mm -hmm. that you're actually working with it in the right way, so you don't. Mm -hmm injure yourself more but what we've seen so it's very very effective in the rehab mm. areas mm. so i would say that that for especially if you have some stability issues like your uh, we're talking about joint stability this mm. is why this is so important because in stand-up paddling you need to be able to stabilize your joints or else the the power that you create just disappear through your body because your your body gives away instead mm. of you know, transforming this energy to the board and moving the board forward. Mm. So that's why we you know we need to to be able we have need to have strong. Uh, wrists, elbows, shoulders, knees, uh, ankles, hips, and everything. Mm. And and the same here, we can see that like for uh, use of the neck, mm -hmm. that position when we paddle is very important. Uh, many people will tilt their necks back because mm -hmm. then leaning forward, the mm -hmm. neck will tilt it back, meaning that we overarch the lower back and, and stuff like that. And, and that could we could be more injury prone doing this mm -hmm. exactly so, they're saying it's good for people and like need possibly during like rehab sessions to progress on improving parts of their body um so you're saying it's also good then too for people who are just like every day all around paddle boarders too and racers or is more for one yeah. or the other no 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 as soon as you're interested in your body and and mm -hmm. also interested in to paddle in more effective way because mm -hmm. it's not how you actually use your your paddle and so on it's more how you use your body mm -hmm. and we have lo to look at, at every specific um, body constitution to be able to decide what technique should be better for this person or or that person so it's it's uh, it's for everyone that want mm -hmm. to get a better understanding of their body and how uh, mm. to move more eff efficiently. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. I can just, you know, uh, as we talked about in the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, what I discovered after like 20, 25 hours of indoor sub only, I was out running and I have never felt as stable, as composed mm. and so powerful in my running. It felt mm. like it could be you know, um, run over by a car and just, you know, keep running. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's cool and exciting to hear how mm -hmm. even just doing indoor sub training, like I said, is going to improve those right. um, stabilizing oh, just, muscles. Just one and second, one second. Yeah, go for it. Was it uh, uh, vacuum cleaner? Okay, uh, <laughs> all good. It started. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's really cool seeing how the indoor sub, like I said, is improving like they're stabilizing muscle or mobility as well. So it like affects other areas of their life. Like you're saying, like for you as you're running for the people who could just be just even just getting around the house or getting around outside, walking on any, even surfaces outdoors for some people, like how can that improve, how it will improve even those parts of life too. So that's what's really, I think exciting for nurse up is like, yes, it's really focused, obviously geared towards paddlers, but it's also geared for people to um, improve those other parts of their, their body to give them a longer, healthier, and more enjoyable life too. And so that's what's super exciting for me to see. And, um, but it's like we we're saying too, I think in this, in this episode today is yes, the nurse up, like it's super vital and it creates an important part of our paddling experience, but it doesn't just, like I said, it doesn't just substitute being on the water itself. Like we still, as a, like I said, a balance of both, like you, you do eventually have to learn how to handle your, your, your balancing muscles on an uneven surface on choppy water conditions. And improving those areas but just like indoor sup 
you don't just jump on a race board as a beginner. Like you jump on a water board to learn your stability and progress and progress um, to a narrow board as you progress as well in your stability. But yeah, so I think in this series too, we're not trying to say like you should just be doing indoor stuff or you should just be on the water, but rather a healthy balance of both so that they're both working together to improve us as a whole, as a paddler and the things we're trying to accomplish. And so I think you guys would agree with that as well. Not You're not trying to say it's one or the other, but rather a mix of both. Yeah, and I would say if you're a stand-up paddler, you should be more out on the water than mm-hmm. indoors. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, a lot I, of time I, too, I like, definitely won't. Yeah. yeah. That practice or that experience doesn't happen without just getting out on the water and getting that experience in person. And so and so yeah, yeah definitely it's super important to be out there and the only way you're improving those areas is actually getting out there and doing it and putting in the time. And so mm-hmm. those are super cool. Yeah, it kind of wraps up today's episode. Um, there's so much more to talk about. I'm excited for this next episode to dive even more into the different parts. Um, like I said, we'll talk some more, but possibly this next episode, maybe we'll take a look at what is actually involved in North Sub in terms of the equipment side of things. So we'll maybe we'll take a look at the, the paddle shaft and the, the rubber bands and stuff and the other things that come in the, the package and talk about like why each piece is in there and how we use it and kind of the idea behind it as well. So I think that would be interesting for, for me as well to hear more of the story behind each piece and the, and the, the equipment um, back there and learn more about it. So thank you again, Magnus, once again, I really appreciate your insights. Um, it's fun learning from you and hearing your story too, for um, as a paddler, as a coach, as an athlete and someone who's just interested in helping people um, become healthier. And so really appreciate your time once again. Thank you. So, peace, Jim. so I hope See you guys, you enjoy- yep. We'll talk to you soon and everyone else enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy a fun paddle session. Hopefully today. And enjoy learning um, just how your body functions on and off the water. So appreciate you guys. We'll see catch you guys in the next episode.